Math 2312, Chapter 1, Functions, Section 1, Functions and Function Notation, Video 2. When is a relation a function? Well, if we're going to answer the question, when is a relation a function, we should probably define what a function is. The definition is actually pretty short, but it takes a moment to wrap your mind around it. A function is a relation, so right out the gate it's one of these things. A relation such that each element of the domain is paired with or assigned exactly one element of the range. Emphasis on the phrase exactly one. The idea of a function is really quite simple. Give me a value and I should be able to match it up with exactly one other value. Not two values, not zero values, not three values, one value. We're going to look at each of these examples from the previous video and attempt to answer the question, is it a function? It's important to point out that the definition of a function establishes a criteria that the domain elements have to satisfy. Each element of the domain does something. Each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. So as we analyze the, to answer the question, is it a function, it's the domain elements that we're scrutinizing. Let's start with the one where we paired the, wor the words red, black, and brown with the number of letters each one contained. Just, on, just glancing at it, do you think it's a function? Do you think each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range? Well, let's see. Our domain contains three values, red, black, and brown. And so each one of those words, we have to ask a question. The question we're going to ask is, how many values from the range are you paired with? Starting with red. How many values is red paired with? Just this value. It's okay. Black, similarly, is paired with just one value. It's okay. And brown, similarly, is paired with just one value. It's okay. Since each element of the domain passes the criteria, it's paired with exactly one value, this is a function. Where some people struggle with is the fact that black and brown are both paired with the same value from the range. Doesn't that contradict the definition about each element of the domain being paired with exactly one element of the range? No. It doesn't say each element of the range is paired with exactly one value from the domain, but rather each element of the domain is paired with exactly one value from the range. In other words, it's okay if multiple X's are paired with the same Y's. Think of it as a, as a vending machine that dispenses sodas, Cokes, if you will. And you had a machine that had three buttons on it. One of them said Coke, one of them said Coke, and the other one said Dr. Pepper. If the machine is functioning properly, then pressing this one button will produce a Coke, but pressing the second button will also produce a Coke. As long as each button produces one output, then it's functioning properly. As long as each X is paired up with a single output, then it's functioning properly. Some of those outputs might be the same, but that's okay. We can't say, Press the Coke button one time we get a Coke and press it the next time we get a Dr. Pepper. Now it's not functioning properly. Well, it's functioning properly. Somebody probably didn't, didn't load it correctly. Uh, let's take a look at the table. Well, the table's a little easier to pass judgment on because there's no repeated values anywhere. Hey, domain value of one, how many range values are you paired with? Just that one, it's okay. The two is only paired with a single value, as is the three and the four. This is a function, and my apologies, I meant to go back here and write that this is a function. As is this one. Think of it this way. Do you remember the context from this one? T is the number of hours driven. D is the distance you've traveled, if you're traveling 50 miles per hour. Being a function basically means if I tell you a time, you can tell me one and only one distance. You can't say I'm driving 50 miles an hour, and after two, after two hours, I've driven 100 miles. But at the same time, I've driven 120. No, you haven't. There's only one output, and it was 100 miles. But what about this guy? This equation. 
Actually, before we go to that, let's go back to the table. I thought about doing this on the set notation, but I'm going to do it here. It is a function. But so far we haven't seen something that isn't. So my question to you is, can you think of what would have to happen if I put another row and change the answer to no, it's not a function? How can we break it from being a function? Well, to be a function, every element of the domain has to be paired with exactly one element from the range. To break it, we have to find an element of the domain that's not paired with exactly one element in the range. So we would have to have an element of the domain that either isn't paired or is paired more than once. For example, let's say I put a 4 here and continue the pattern over here for the 250. If this ordered pair were in this relation, then this would cease to be a function because now we've got what I call a bad x. Really, I should say bad first coordinate or bad domain element, but we've got an x that when we ask its question, excuse me, element of the domain, number four, how many range elements are you paired up with? Shh, two of them. Bad X, you're no longer a function. So to summarize, if you have a relation written in set notation or as a table, it's pretty easy to identify something that is not a function. You simply find a repeated X that has multiple y values paired with it. Or more generically, if you find a repeated element of the domain that has multiple elements of the range paired with it. But back to its original state, this is a function. Now what about this equation, x equals y squared plus one? Does this represent a function? Well, to be honest with you, we have to be a little bit more specific when we say does it represent a function. Because there's actually two ways to look at this. Either x is a function of y or y is a function of x. Uh, in other words, it matters who you call the domain and range. And I know you've probably be con been conditioned into thinking domain is the x's, range is the y's. But nobody ever said that a function had to be a function of x or a function of y. The, the choice of calling domain x and range y is completely arbitrary. Now, standardly, you can come on in if you want to, but this is on the screen, so. Traditionally, when you talk about domains and range, you just assume x is from the domain and y is from the range. If that were the case, then we would have a problem right here. We've already got evidence that this equation is not a function because we have a value from the domain that's paired up with more than one value from the range. However, we, we could just say that x is not a function of y. Excuse me, I said, I said that backwards. This crazy woman's distracting. Y is not a function of X, meaning that if we picked an X value, like five, we could get more than one Y value. But in this particular equation, X is a function of Y. In other words, I'm reversing who's the domain and who's the range. Think of it this way. To be a function of something means if I pick a value for you, it's gonna generate one other value. We already know, we already know, based on what we did earlier, that when we picked an x, it generated two y's. The y is not a function of x. Picking one x does not generate one y. However, we also said that we could generate the ordered pairs this way, and think about it. If we pick a value for a y, this is how we would calculate the x. So no matter what number we put here, this will give us one answer. The x is a function of the y, meaning that for each y value, we generate one x value. Try not to get so hung up on domain as x range as y, because the choice of x for domain and y for range is completely arbitrary. I will admit that in most applications, the domain is represented by x and the range is represented by y. But that, that choice is actually fairly arbitrary. This equation, y is a function of x. No, I said that backwards. x is a function of y. Give me a number for y, and I'll give you one and only one value for x. But y is not a function of x, meaning if you give me a value of x, 
I'll get two values for y. So equations are a little bit trickier. Now, as far as graphs, there's a real easy way if we're answering the question, is y a function of x? Is y a function of x? Meaning, if I go over to a single x value like this one, is there only one y paired with it? Well, in this case, no. Because if I go over to this x value, I'll get a y up here, we'll call it y1, but I'll also have a y down here, we'll call it y2. Because these two points have the same x but different y's, assuming x is the domain, then no. Now, some of you may be familiar with something called the vertical line test. Vertical line test. Which says, if you take the vertical line of your choice, and you can cross a graph more than once, then y is not a function of x. Because the two places where it crosses represent points with the same x value but different y values. Meaning that I can't get a unique y value for a given x value. Not to make your head hurt too much, in this graph, x is a function of y. Now, I'm not about to break out something called the horizontal line test, because there is one, and it means something besides what I'm about to show you. But when I say y is a function of x, here's what I mean. Excuse me. When I say x is a function of y, here's what I mean. If I go to a y value, for example, let's go to this y value right here. Is there only one point on the graph with an x value? If I go over to the graph, the answer is yes. You could actually create something called a horizontal line test, which answers the question, is x a function of y? But we're not going to make that horizontal line test because when we talk about the horizontal line test, it'll answer a different question. The vertical line test answers the question, is y a function of x? But just keep in mind that although traditionally domain is x values and range is y values, that choice is completely arbitrary. In this equation, y is not a function of x because one x can generate multiple y's, but x is a function of y, meaning give me a y value and I'll calculate one and only one x value. Gotta walk around to pause the video or stop the video.